Today, in this video, I'm going to be talking about diverticular disease. Diverticular disease is an acquired herniation of the colonic mucosa through the muscular wall with a covering of the colonic serosa. So mucosa is the inner wall, inner lining of the colon. So it herniates through the muscular wall into the serosa, so with the covering of the serosa, which is the outer layer of the colon wall. For epidemiology, diverticular disease increases with the age. So 25% of the disease happens in people who are older than 70 years old. Majority of the patients are asymptomatic. Only 10 to 30% present with symptoms, which the symptoms I'll be talking about later in the video. So the more common site is the sigmoid colon. Due to reduced luminal diameter, and increased luminal pressure in the sigmoid colon. If the diverticulum is at the right side, we will think of it more towards the genetic cause. Pathogenesis of diverticular disease. There are two main factors. First one is due to increased intraluminal pressure. And second is due to some degenerative changes in the colonic wall. So, especially at the point of entry of the terminal arterial branches of the colon, where the serosa is the weakest, so easier to, for the mucosa wall to herniate into the serosa, causing diverticulum. And also due to weakening of the collagen structure in the colonic wall, due to old age. That's why old age is a risk factor for diverticular disease. So, when there is degeneration in the colonic wall, plus increased intraluminal pressure, diverticulum will be formed. So the risk factors of diverticular disease are dietary fiber, which uh, means diet lacking in fiber, and also genetic factor. These are the three types of diverticulitis, the three main types, which I will explain one by one in this video. So the first one is acute diverticulitis. The clinical presentation of acute diverticulitis depends on the location of the affected diverticulum and also the severity of the inflammatory process. So some of the symptoms are, for example, left iliac fossa pain. Left iliac fossa, same as the uh, left lower quadrant pain. So this pain will be colicky in nature, progressing to constant pain, and it is relieved by defecation. Other symptoms are like nausea and vomiting, constipation or diarrhea, flatulence or blotting. And the signs would be low-grade fever, tenderness in the left iliac fossa region, and a palpable mass in the left iliac fossa. The investigations for acute diverticulitis include full blood count, where we will see leukocytosis, which means high white blood cell level, and also high ESR due to the ongoing inflammation in the colon. Second investigation will be erect chest x-ray to rule out any perforation in the colon. If there is perforation, erect chest x-ray can show us gas under diaphragm. Third would be abdominal x-ray. We look for ileus and look for air fluid level within excess. Other investigation include CT scan with triple contrast or laparoscopy. And this one down here, the barium enema and colonoscopy, this X here means that we cannot do these investigations. Because barium enema, for barium enema, it is contraindicated, which means cannot be done, as the barium may leak out into the peritoneal cavity, and this will cause barium peritonitis. And for colonoscopy, we cannot do it because in diverticular disease, there will be high risk of perforation of the colon if we do colonoscopy, and this might worsen the diverticulitis. For management of acute diverticulitis, we do conservative management, which include bed rest, new by mouth, IV fluid resuscitation, and also we give broad spectrum antibiotics like augmentin or metronidazole or ciprofloxacin. We also give antispasmodics. So 
after the acute phase of the acute diverticulitis has settled, which takes maybe around four to six weeks, we do colonoscopy or barium enema. So colonoscopy is done after the acute phase to confirm the diagnosis of acute diverticulitis and to exclude colon cancer. So uh, most of it, most of, mostly we will do colonoscopy, but if we cannot do colonoscopy, we will do barium enema. So barium enema is actually um, inferior to colonoscopy in terms of the image quali quality. And barium enema is only performed if the patient has any stricture in the colon or an excessively tortuous sigmoid colon, where colonoscopy will be difficult or dangerous to do. Then we will do barium enema. First choice would be colonoscopy. Okay, so chronic diverticulitis. The clinical presentation is similar to the acute diverticulitis, except that in chronic one, there will be recurrent left iliac fossa pain. And also passage of parietal mucus. It also will present with irregular bowel habit like constipation and bouts of diarrhea. For investigation, since the diverticulitis is mostly in sigmoid colon, rigid and flexible sigmoidoscopy can be done. So rigid sigmoidoscopy is done to assess for edematous mucosa and also assess the rigidity of the rectal sigmoid junction. Whereas flexible sigmoidoscopy is done to look for diverticular orifices, like we can see in this picture here. You can see those holes, there are diverticular orifices, suggestive of diverticulum. Third investigation is barium enema, when, where we can look for sore tooth appearance, like this picture here. It looks like the sore tooth. We can also look for any diverticular and stricture. And lastly, colonoscopy to exclude the differential diagnosis like colon cancer. For management, we can do conservative management like, um, like the acute phase. And also can do surgical management. Surgi surgery is indicated if there is severe and recurrent attacks or possible colon CA or the, young, the patients are very young, less than 40 years old, with very high recurrence rate then we can suggest surgery to be done. And lastly, the third type of diverticulitis, the complicated type, which is also the most dangerous type. It is associated with perforation of the colon or paracolic abscess, which is secondary to localized perforation. Bowel obstruction, which happens due to stricture or adherence to a diverticular mass lower GIT hemorrhage, which happens when there is an ulcerated vessel at the neck of the diverticulum, and lastly, fistula formation, especially after, maybe after an operation on the colon or a drainage procedure of the pericolic abscess, there will be fistula formation, which will lead to complicated diverticulitis. That's all for my video. Thank you.